Hey everyone, it's Sophia from Gutsy. Today, I'll be talking about a big buzzword in the microbiome space, dysbiosis. You've probably come across it, but what does it actually mean? How does it affect your gut and what causes it? Find out in this video. As with most things in nature, our body and all its bacteria like to be in harmony. But when your community is out of balance, we call it dysbiosis. Literally, we can define dysbiosis as microbial imbalance in or on the body that can negatively impact health. This imbalance can happen because we lose or gain community members or because of changes in the relative abundance, the percentages of microbes. Most commonly, dysbiosis happens in our GI tract, our stomach and guts. Now, you may be thinking, why should you care? Well, the variety, balance and relationships between these microbes are all crucial for good health. For instance, having more of one microbe and not enough of others, or perhaps having a lack of diversity among the different types of microbes in your gut can lead to dysbiosis. What causes dysbiosis? The science is still out, but several factors seem to be at play. Right now, there are five main links. One, diet. Changes in diet, such as an increase in sugar, saturated fats, and animal protein can lead to dysbiosis. For instance, typical Western diets high in processed foods are often linked with dysbiosis. Two, lifestyle. Leading a sedentary lifestyle without exercise, as well as smoking, drinking, and experiencing high levels of stress, all elevate risk for developing dysbiosis. Three, antibiotic use. Antibiotics can kill many good gut bacteria, leading to an imbalance in the microbiome. Overuse of antibiotics can lead to overgrowth of opportunistic bacteria and fungi, which can lead then to infections in the skin, genitals, and GI tract. Four, parasites. Parasites, viruses, and fungi can also all cause disturbances. These can often occur due to contaminated food or water, as well as sexually transmitted diseases. Five, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, SIBO. This is a condition where there is excessive bacteria in the small intestine, which is responsible for nutrient absorption. This is problematic because these microbes are meant to be in the large intestine, where the microbiome is. When food is not moved along the small intestine well enough, it can lead to bacterial overgrowth. If the beneficial bacteria that help you digest food cannot keep up with the bad bacteria, this can lead to a fast multiplication of the harmful bacteria and then lead to cyber. Now, you may be wondering, how do you know if you have dysbiosis? Well, there are some common signs or triggers that I'll list now. Dysbiosis is also associated with several conditions, such as irritable bowel syndrome, leaky gut syndrome, obesity, and diabetes. Still, scientists don't know whether it's a cause or effect. It's been hypothesized that the fine balance of bacteria in the gut can impact immunity by directly influencing the health of the gut lining. A healthy gut lining has some permeability, allowing nutrients to pass through the gut, whilst also maintaining a barrier function to filter out harmful substances. How can you treat dysbiosis? Most treatments will depend on the severity of your symptoms and will address those directly. Currently, medical diagnosis and treatment is prescribed based on comparisons to the general population, instead of looking at your own unique features, like your microbiome. Researchers predict that in the near future, doctors will analyze your microbiome and then prescribe treatment based on your own gut profile as a form of personalized medicine. Don't forget that you control your diet and lifestyle. Ensuring you follow a healthy diet and active lifestyle is a great way to start. This means eating your three Ps, probiotics, prebiotics, and plants. Dysbiosis can be a temporary imbalance that is either the root or consequence of a gut illness. That's why it's super important to listen to your gut so you can intervene as soon as possible and prevent any serious complications. Well, there you have it. Now you know all about dysbiosis. I'll be sharing more videos on the microbiome, so make sure to subscribe.